Wi-Fi One. Wi-Fi One came out in 1999, and this was the first time people could connect to the internet wirelessly. It operated in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band and delivered speeds up to 11 megabits per second, which was enough for simple things like browsing the web and sending emails. However, the 2.4 gigahertz band came with a big problem. A lot of devices actually emit the exact same radio frequency, such as cordless phones, microwave ovens, and even Bluetooth signals. So Wi-Fi signals often got interrupted or weakened whenever those devices were running. And since the speed was already that slow, only one person can use the Wi-Fi. So if there's another guy trying to connect to the Wi-Fi as well, then the connection would be too slow and unresponsive. That's why some people back then still preferred using wired connections instead of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 2. Wi-Fi 2 was also introduced in 1999 like Wi-Fi 1, but it used the 5 GHz band instead of the 2.4 GHz. With this higher frequency band, it could deliver speeds up to 54 megabits per second, which made downloading files quicker and loading pages much smoother. And not just the speed, the 5 GHz band also has better stability compared to the 2.4 GHz. This is because most devices only emit signals at 2.4 GHz, so the 5 GHz band does doesn't experience interference from those devices. But despite being faster and having less interference, the 5 GHz signal is shorter than 2.4 GHz. That's why Wi-Fi 2 was mostly used inside offices since the short distance won't be a problem anyway. Wi-Fi 3 Wi-Fi 3 came out in 2003, and it's the generation that made Wi-Fi more popular for normal people. That's because it uses the 2.4 GHz frequency like Wi-Fi 1, but now its speed can reach up to 54 megabits per second like Wi-Fi 2. And this combination was great because at that time, Wi-Fi 1 could reach a wide area, but it was too slow. And Wi-Fi 2 has a higher speed, but the area it can cover is too short. But with Wi-Fi 3, people finally got both good speed and wide coverage, which is why Wi-Fi started becoming common in many homes. Wi-Fi 4. Wi-Fi 4 came out in 2009, and it is the first generation that supports dual band. This means the router can transmit both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz signals at the same time. The top speeds also increased a lot, reaching up to 300 megabits per second on 2.4 GHz and up to 600 megabits per second on 5 GHz. So the way this dual band works is, you'll usually see two networks with similar names that actually come from the same router. Now let's say the router is on the second floor of your home. If you go downstairs to the first floor, your phone can still stay connected using the 2.4 gigahertz signal since it has a wider range despite the slower speed. But when you want to download games or stream videos, you can go back to the second floor near the router to switch to the 5 gigahertz band, which can give you faster speed and minimal interference. And not just that, Wi-Fi 4 also has a feature called MIMO, or multiple input, multiple output. So back then, before MIMO existed, normally a router sent and received data one stream at a time, which made the connection have some sort of delay to process data. But with MIMO technology, the router can send and receive data continuously at the same time using its multiple antennas, so you get a faster and more consistent connection as a result. Wi-Fi 5 Wi-Fi 5 came out in 2013, and it was the first Wi-Fi generation to reach a gigabit level speed. It uses the 5 gigahertz band and can go up to 3.5 gigabits per second, which is great for smooth 4K streaming and downloading massive files like AAA games. Wi-Fi 5 also introduces MU MIMO feature, which is MIMO but for multiple users. So before Wi-Fi 5, routers could only send data to one device at a time, which means other devices had to wait their turn. But with Wi-Fi 5, it can send data to multiple users simultaneously, so downloading or streaming on many devices can stay smooth at the same time. And Wi-Fi 5 has a unique feature called beamforming as well. Normally, Wi-Fi signals spread out in every direction, so a lot of that signal gets wasted. But with beamforming, the router can focus the signal directly toward your device, which makes the connection stronger and more stable, especially when you're a bit far from the router. However, despite all the speed upgrades and the beamforming feature, you have to remember that the actual performance you get still depends on the package you choose from your internet provider, because these numbers are just the maximum capability of the router. Which means, if you have a Wi-Fi 5 router, but you're choosing the 100 megabits per second plan, then you will still only get 100 megabits per second, not 1 gigabit per second. So yeah, we still have to upgrade the internet plan first if we want to reach a higher internet speed.
Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 was released in 2019, and it was designed to handle many devices at the same time. It uses the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands with a maximum speed up to 9.6 gigabits per second. But actually, what makes Wi-Fi 6 great for large-scale use isn't the speed upgrade, but because it has a new feature called OFDMA. So when connected to many devices, this feature makes your router perform more efficiently, so the speed you get is still so fast. And unlike Wi-Fi 5, which has MU-MIMO, but with only four simultaneous data streams, Wi-Fi 6 has eight simultaneous data streams instead. That's why this router is commonly used in cafes, airports, or houses that have many devices. And since OFDMA actually helps reduce latency as well, Wi-Fi 6 is also great for competitive online gaming and video calls because they need a fast real-time response. Response. And because of this, these days there are some Wi-Fi routers that look more futuristic with sharp edges, which highlights the low latency feature. Anyway, if you're interested in upgrading, I've already put some recommended routers in the description for you to check out later. Wi-Fi 6E Wi-Fi 6E came out in 2021, and it is basically Wi-Fi 6, but now it has a new extended frequency called the 6 GHz band. So this 6 GHz band is very useful in places like corporate offices or professional studios, because in these environments, hundreds of devices are already using the same 2.4 and 5 GHz bands from multiple routers, which makes the signals overlap. So if you use that network too, then the connection might become unstable. That's why the 6 GHz band was created so that you your device doesn't get interfered with those overlapping signals. However, not all devices support Wi-Fi 6E yet. Usually only high-end or flagship devices like iPhones and MacBooks, Samsung Galaxy Ultra Series, and Asus ROG laptops that support it. Oh yeah, if you're wondering why some Wi-Fi 6E devices look different from the usual routers, that's because they have Wi-Fi mesh systems. Basically, mesh system uses multiple small routers placed around a building to create one big Wi-Fi network, so your device can automatically connect to the nearest point for a stronger network. This is especially useful because because a regular router often can't cover large spaces on its own. Wi-Fi 7 Wi-Fi 7 came out in 2024, and it is called Extremely High Throughput, or EHT Wi-Fi. That's because it can reach a maximum speed of 46 gigabits per second, which is insane. Another thing that makes Wi-Fi 7 superior is because it has a feature called MLO, or Multi-Link Operation. So normally your device can only use one frequency band at a time, but with Wi-Fi 7's MLO feature, it can connect to multiple bands at once and combine them. This means you get the long range of 2.4 gigahertz plus the higher speed and lower congestion of the five and six gigahertz bands at the same time. Also, when using other routers, you can sometimes get randomly disconnected and then connected again because there's network interference or congestion. But Wi-Fi 7 has a technology called multi-RU puncturing. So if there's interference, this feature will stabilize the network by finding and using the other parts of the signal that are clean instead of disconnecting and connecting the network. But of course, all these upgrades make Wi-Fi 7 routers more expensive than the others. And only a tech enthusiast or high-end gamer would need Wi-Fi 7 anyway. For most people, Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6 is more than enough for daily activity. By the way, I made other cool videos too, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?